In today's video I'm going to show you how to improve your music reading skills and to widen your improvisational horizon by practicing these 16 16th patterns. At the end of the video I'm also going to give you a bonus tip on how to approach cross rhythms, so make sure to watch the whole thing. Bass hack coming up! Hackers, Misha here with MM Education, showing you how to learn faster and practice smarter by using the latest findings in neuroscience, so you can become the bass player you want to be, express yourself freely on your instrument and connect with the audience on a deeper level. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and at any point during the video go check out the show notes in the YouTube description. Bullet points for this episode links to related videos and free resources, all in the description. Let's get going and build some new neural pathways. I'm not the best sight reader there is, but one thing that helped me tremendously with sight reading is knowing all 16th patterns. Would you like to be able to play any 16th note patterns with feel without counting subdivisions? Well, there's only one way to do it. You Gotta learn them all. And to make that a bit easier, I came up with 16th patterns roadmap. So how many 16th patterns are there anyway? Well, if you listen closely, you already know because I told you just a minute ago. But for those of you who haven't, and for those of you who are interested why there is exactly 16, it's very simple, one 16th pattern consists of four sixteenths. Basically, the time between one and another quarter note. How many variations of that are possible? For every sixteenth pattern, you can either play a sixteenth or have a sixteenth rest. So it's two possibilities times two possibilities times two possibilities times two possibilities. Two times two is four times two is eight times two is sixteen. Makes sense, no? And here is a 16th pattern map. As you can see, there is four 1 16th note patterns. There are six 2 16th note patterns. There are four 3 16th note patterns, one with four and one with zero. To make sure that you can play all of these patterns equally well, go through all of them one by one at a moderate tempo. Find out how quick you can play the 4 note pattern. This is going to be your threshold. Now go back and find out which ones are the hardest to play. Prioritize these and practice them with a subdivision click or by calling out the subdivisions yourself. Practice as slow as need be. Use the stop, fix, repeat concept. Spend two to five minutes on each pattern until you get a good feel of them. The moment you can play these patterns at the threshold speed without making a mistake, you can go on to combining them to etude-like patterns, give each note a different pitch or further raise the tempo. As promised, here comes the bonus tip to approaching cross rhythms, particularly five against four and three against four. This is actually quite cool. If you look at the three lines of one note patterns, two note patterns that are right next to each other and three note patterns, if you read them from left to right, it's exactly what you have to play if you play four against five. If you want to play three against four, just do the same thing but read from right to left. Here's one example of five against four. I'm just going to go through the line from left to right of the two adjacent 16th notes. So I have a pattern of two 16th notes and then three 16th rests. One, two, three, four. A little bit quicker. A 
Then we can do the same thing with 3 against 4. Just reading from right to left now. Still gonna start on the first pattern just because it's so nice to start out on the one. But then I'm gonna jump right to the fourth pattern and go backwards from there. So this one's gonna be like this. One, two, three, four. There you go. Cross rhythms to go. So today I showed you how to make sure you're comfortable with playing every 16th rhythm possible. And I gave you a rock solid approach to get that ASAP. So now it's up to you to not just take in the information, but instead create new neural pathways by applying the newly gained knowledge. Question of the day. Which is your favorite 16th note bass line? Let us know in the comment section. And remember, some of the coolest ideas come from you and the MM Education community. So connect with everyone in the comments. And if there's a specific topic that you would like to be covered in one of the future episodes, let me know in the comments as well. All right, bass hackers, thanks for checking out this video. I hope it got you one step further towards becoming the bass player you want to be. Definitely subscribe for more videos just like this. And if you haven't downloaded my top 10 practicing hacks, I show you exactly what you need to do to learn more in less time. You learn about state management, about practice based setup, about having better focus and more. You can grab that for free with a link in the description. Until next time, MM Education helps you to learn faster and practice smarter. So keep up the good work. Love and base.